picture Jesus having to make a decision about choosing 12 disciples out of his many disciples. He had to choose 12. He continued all night in prayer to God. Went alone on the mountain and began to pray. And he asked the Father, who do I choose? And 12 names were given to him by his heavenly Father. And while that same night he's on the mountaintop praying alone with the Lord, God the Father gave him what we call the Beatitudes. He gave the very next day. This wonderful truth that he was teaching. This was something that came out of the heart of the Father. And he said, as my Father speaks, so I speak. And he gave all the blessings. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, and all the woes that came. The Beatitudes the next day. Jesus spent time daily, I believe, with the Heavenly Father. He spent hours after every miracle, after every great sign, everything that he did, he rushed back to his Heavenly Father. And Jesus came forth. Now folks, he's ministered to 5,000 people. He's healed as many as came to him for healing. He fed the multitudes, a busy, heavy day. And what does he do after he feeds the 5,000? Immediately escape to a mountain to be alone with the Father. But folks, Jesus knew the covenant work that he was to do. That was all planned in eternity. He was to come to set the captives free, to loosen prisoners. He was to heal the sick and open blind eyes. Those were covenant works that had been outlined to him before he came. But in his daily walk, he chose to be totally submitted to the will of the Father. This is our work. We're to pray without ceasing. We are to walk in His righteousness. We're to study His Word. We're to minister to the sick. We're to love one another. There are many, many loving commandments of Jesus given to us. Love one another. We know these things. These are covenant works that, that are all outlined in the Bible. And we need that voice of the Lord Jesus leading us, guiding us, and speaking to us. And we need to hear that voice that Jesus heard, the voice of the Heavenly Father. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I've made known unto you, Jesus said. You religious Jews, I've come to minister to you, but all, all you have is the dead theology of Abraham, your father. You're talking about the past. But Jesus said, I gave you something Abraham didn't give you. I've been talking to my father. I'm speaking to you from heaven. Why wouldn't God speak in this generation when there's so much fear, so much uncertainty, and we need a voice from heaven more than we have ever needed in any generation than we do now? Now for pastors to go to the pulpit with a borrowed message, I think it's cheating the congregation. I think it's criminal that men today are not hearing the voice of God and coming to the pulpit with thus saith the Lord. And I believe it's possible to have the Holy Ghost set a heart so set on seeking God daily, every day giving Him precious quality time, and be able to learn to sit at his feet and just minister to him and wait and allow the Lord Jesus to speak his heart into our lives and to be directed by Jesus Christ and be taught by him. Paul said, the son was revealed in me, not to me, but in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. I conferred not with flesh and blood, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But that Word, every word that He speaks divinely in our hearts, that can be backed up by this Word and, and absolutely conforming to this Word we can trust. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for pastors. Pray for the world. Pray for missions. Pray for workers of the harvest. Spend your time in prayer, but then there's quality time with the Lord. And when you stop and say, now, Lord, this is your time. And just quietly worship and say, Lord, speak to me. The Bible says in Jeremiah sought the Lord for 10 days and on the 10th day God spoke. He waited till every other voice was gone. And folks, that's patience. I want to hear 
the voice of my Lord. It'll humble you, but you'll come here worshiping the Lord as you've never worshiped him before. And you'll know things about your house, your home, your direction. All of that will follow. I want to hear his voice. I want to know his voice. If you want that, it's yours. It's a holy obsession. It has to obsess you. I want my last days, the time that I have left, to be wholly given to him while I'm still busy pastoring, writing books and doing all these things, but have that time for him. And that's what this is all about.